Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is a bit of an update on some of my um, plants that are outside the front. So, first up, this is a pot of Sedum Comic Tom that I've just taken some cuttings out of. Next up, we've got a Graft Petal and Bellum. Which was grown from leaf. And here's some more Sedum Rubricinctum or jelly bean plants that were grown from leaf. And here's a, a nice large rubricinctum that was actually grown in a slightly different soil mix to all my others and it seems to look really good for it so I'll uh, be bearing that in mind next year. This is a Gratopetalum blackberry. Quite a slow growing plant but uh, quite rare. This is aloe delta light. And here we have Gratopetalum paraguayense bernalese, I think. And this is Echeveri Q marble, which is really nice with the kind of pinky purple mottling all over the the leaves. And here we have two Gratopetalum paraguayense. I'm a big fan of this one. It's a uh, it's kind of the chameleon of the succulent world because it changes colours a lot depending on the conditions. This is Sedum Dasphilum opaline and a part of Sedum Starly that I've just taken some cuttings from um, as they were getting a bit tall. And then in here we have a Echeveria Black Prince and a Gratopetalum Superbum. And this is a Echeveria lilacina that I grew from leaf this year. And this is quite a badly snail damaged um, Dasphilum opaline. And then next up we have some flowers. Now if any of you can look at those and tell me what the plant is, I'd really appreciate that because I'm still none the wiser. Um, and then behind there we've got a Crassula Hummel Sunset that's grown from leaf and this is the plant with the flowers I'm just not sure what the idea is and it's got two pups one on either side and next up is a pot of or one of my pots of Gratopetal Mirene uh, this is just started to recover from being snail damaged the other side's worse but uh, there we go uh, this is a sedum, a golden sedum, a sedum adolfi. Uh, the pot's far too small for it, so it's kind of just stopped growing, but I'll sort that out soon. And here's another sedum adolfi, which is much more compact. A uh, really nice plant. Uh, this is a sedum trilisii. They, uh, they really look the best with quite a lot of sun on them. They develop a lot of tinges. Now this one is a Graps of Sedum Bronze and as you can see the top is missing. And what happened here was a slug or a snail ate the growing centre and then it started to rot back. So I had to chop the top off. But luckily I've got got these pups around the bottom. Uh, this is a, a Crashula Hummel Sunset. A very stressed out one but uh, it looks great. Very vivid colours. And here we have Sedum Morganianum. Or the uh, Burrow's Tail Sedum. And then this is Echeveria Agavoides. I'm not sure which one exactly. But it's uh, nice. This is an Echeveria Amoena, which I'm really starting to like. Uh, the colours have changed because we've had some very cold weather lately. Like some nights have been down to 4 degrees Celsius, which is around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it really brings out the colours. Uh, this is Echeveria Black Prince. Again, snail damage on that top leaf there. But uh, This is Echeveria Duchess of Nuremberg. Very similar to the Pearl von Nuremberg, but... Um, there are differences, and I actually prefer this one, I think. It's 
uh, got more of a darker tone to it. And more snail damage there on the two little lecture chromas that I grew from leaf um, in spring, I think. And this is a, a really beautiful plant. This is an Echeveria Neon Breakers. Uh, it's my only ruffled Echeveria. And uh, it's got a little pop at the back. But great colours on it. And uh, a really nice plant. Here we have an Echeveria. Black Knight or Dark Knight and an Echeveria Chroma and I actually took two leaves off this when I first got it and that's where the other two Chromas came from. Now this one's been really badly damaged by slugs or snails um, but it's an Echeveria Paris Palace. Uh, it's got a great kind of autumnal colour that seems to have come out more as the uh, as the temperatures have dropped. Really nice. This is a Graptoveria Tichibans. Um, it's had some water that's sat in the middle of the rosette, which has caused some stains. Because we've had cold weather and not a lot of sun, it's not evaporated off and it's marked. Um, this is Graptopetalum paraguansi bernalese again. Uh, it was in flower recently, but I didn't get a chance to film that, I don't think. And then next up, this is a Gratpetum claret, which doesn't seem to be very happy at the moment. Maybe it's the cold weather, but it's shedding quite a lot of the lower leaves. So I'll have to deal with that soon. But it was starting to produce a flower spike. You may be able to see there in the centre of the rosette. Um, next up, we've got an Echeveria prolifica, which, uh, as you can see, all these tendrils that have got new pups on the end and uh, since filming this I've actually chopped those off and stuck them in a pot to reroot or to root uh, so this is Graz Petalum oh sorry no it's not it's Edgeveria Pearl von Nuremberg uh, and they're really really root bound so they've kind of just stopped growing now but I'll uh, I'll be separating these out Great colours though. Uh, next up we have an, a multi-headed Echeveria Chrissy and Ryan. And here is another part of Graptopata Mirane. Now you can probably see that stem uh, is missing at the top. And what happened there was very similar to the Graptosedum. It was eaten by something. And uh, it just started to rot back. So I had to chop that top bit off. This is a uh, Echeveria Chrissy and Ryan. <laughs> And next up, this is a um, Echeveria Zaragoza, but this one's been quite badly damaged in the centre by mealybugs. Um, the, I've only had two mealybugs this year, like literally just two individual mealybugs. One was in the centre of this plant and one was on a Hummel Sunset. But uh, luckily I caught it quite early. So this is, I th I've been calling this Pachyphytum oviferum for a while, but I think this might be Pachyphytum bractosium. But uh, we'll just call it a moonstone still, for convenience. It's a really, really great plant. It seems to have coloured up a lot since the cold weather's come along. Um, next up is a panda ears, or Calanchoe tomentosa. Uh, I've only had these cheap, nasty little pots lying around, but I've just repotted it into it because it was desperately root-bound. In fact, most of these plants are. Um, I'll have to sort that soon i just haven't had a chance to get pots so that was an aeonium kiwi that had a little pup developing um near the rosette near the center of the rosette uh, this is an aloe pelgory i think with nice red spikes on it and um you may remember the last time you saw this it was inside and it was actually completely green and as you can see a short time outside in the sun and it's turned like this nice bronzy silvery blue colour. This one 
I think is an Echeveria Amoina, but I'm not sure. Um, it's very dehydrated, I think. So here we have Sempervivum uh, of some form. I'm not sure. I'm rubbish for Sempervivum, sorry. I will have to sit down one day and try and figure them out. But uh, I actually had a big pot fall over and I couldn't cram them all back in again. So I put put a lot of them in this uh, in this container just to let them have a bit of space to grow. But I do think Sempervirums tend to look the best when they're cold. They just develop a uh, much deeper colour. Now this one I think is a Sempervirum Jovar, something beginning with J. I almost remembered it then, but I didn't. Um, and then here we have a crested Sempervirum. Um, I think it's the green one. And then this is a Sempervirum uh, blood blood tip or something like that or ivory tip um, there we go now these are just some uh, plants that kind of accidentally sprung up like leaves fell into this big pot and then this is what's happened uh, obviously I put the yellow black gem in there um, so these are actually Sempervivum seeds that um, you remember, may remember all my Sempervirums that were in flower this year. Well, I actually collected the seeds and just sprinkled them in this pot, and they germinated very, very quickly indeed. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, hybrids are produced as a result of the crossing. That's something that I find really interesting when growing plants is the ability to create hybrids. Uh, I'd definitely like to do it more in the future. So this is uh, an aloe vera. It's far too cold out there for it now, so I'll have to find somewhere for it. And this is a really badly snail damaged um, Echeveria satosa that if I want to save, I'm going to have to find somewhere else. You can see quite a bit of snail damage on that one. Uh, this is Kalanchoe tomentosa. Um, I've actually got a video coming up on this soon because the root systems on them are massive. Um... And then there we have a purple pearl and a Pachyphytum compactum. Big fan of that plant. I look forward to seeing it grow. And I'm uh, not sure what those two are. They're of the same variety that was in flower earlier. And then here we have a ball of Sempervivums. You may realise that it looks a little bit different. And that's because the whole bowl ended up falling over or someone knocked it over. And uh, they went everywhere. So I've recently had to kind of stick things back in different pots um, but they'll soon fill back in again they're quite quite prolific in terms of popping hence the name hens and chicks and uh, here's another bowl this was one that was outside the back actually and I just decided to bring it out the front as there's a little bit more sun um, and you may see that there was a bit of a gap and that was where the big flower stem came out of and I actually pulled that out and they'll soon fill that back in again. Uh, there's a couple of sedums dotted around in there that kind of crept in. But I really hope you've enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.